In this issue of Nintendo Power, we'll highlight some classic Mario titles on the Super Nintendo, including Super Mario Kart, Yoshi's Island, and Super Mario RPG. Let's take a closer look at Nintendo Power, Volume 82. Nintendo Power Magazine had an impressive run from 1988 through 2012. The magazine featured awesome artwork and many great games. Join me as I revisit these issues and highlight the content inside in Nintendo Power Recharged. Volume 82 of Nintendo Power Magazine was published in March of 1996. The cover of this issue features a sneak peek and artwork for Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars. The game had not yet been released, but previewed in the Epic Center in the magazine. This game combines the fun of a typical Mario game with the immersive story and gameplay of a role-playing game. Super Mario RPG offered the unique ability to not only play as Princess Toadstool, but also team up with Bowser. Other memorable characters include Mallow, Prince of Nimbus Land, and Gino, a doll that comes to life. The game offers creative 3D levels for you to explore and is jam-packed with fun minigames and tons of secrets. Like most issues of Nintendo Power, this volume comes with detachable inserts and a removable poster. Attached in the center are character cards from Mortal Kombat 3, with background information on each fighter as well as cheat codes to enter in the game. The poster in this issue advertises the Super Nintendo game War of the Gems, a 2D action platformer from Capcom based in the Marvel Universe. The next game featured in this installment is Smurfs for the Nintendo Game Boy. The article displays level layouts for this 2D platforming game, guiding you through your journey across mountains, swamps, and a gold mine. The Smurfs originally released exclusively to Europe in 1994 as the characters were more popular in this region. While NES and Super Nintendo games were also developed, the Game Boy version was the only one to reach North America in 1996. As an added bonus for the game, the cartridge is also compatible with the Super Game Boy, unlocking enhanced color palettes and visuals. Another game preview in the Epic Center discusses the upcoming release of a hit RPG, Tales of Fantasia. Unfortunately, this Super Nintendo game never made it to North America and was only released in Japan. It wasn't until 2006 that the game was ported to the Game Boy Advance and brought to both North America and Europe. Another game highlighted in this issue is Super Mario Kart. While the game originally released in 1992, this feature coincides with the release of the best seller version of the game. A new peripheral at the time is also advertised alongside the release, the X-Band Network Modem. This adapter allows you to connect to a network and play with people across the country, similar to the Mario Kart of today. This section discusses various gameplay strategies, from the use of power-ups to mastering the terrain. It also discusses the attributes of each driver while showcasing some great artwork of the different characters. A special feature in this volume are the 1995 Nintendo Power Awards. The best games of 1995 are acknowledged and ranked in a variety of different categories. Some of the rankings here are right on the money. Most epic games go to Chrono Trigger, Ogre Battle, Earthbound, and Secret of Evermore. In the best sound department we have Donkey Kong Country 2, Chrono Trigger, and Killer Instinct. And most annoying feature in a game rightfully goes to Crybaby Mario from Yoshi's Island. Then things take a turn for the worse. For best story, Scooby-Doo ranks number one, ahead of both Earthbound and Chrono Trigger. Best graphics go to... Toy Story? And while I love Secret of Evermore, how is it even on the list for the funniest game? Moving right along, not only was the Super Nintendo at full stride in 1996, but Nintendo was also developing for the Virtual Boy. 3D Tetris is a spin-off of the classic puzzle game from 1985. The playfield is transformed into three-dimensional space, and you can rotate the angle for a different perspective. Like usual, you have various shaped tetrads that must be lined up and interlocked together to clear layers and score points. The game offers three different play modes for hours of block stacking, headache-inducing fun. The Pack Watch section announces some exclusive information on the N64, planned for release later that year. 
The system was originally going to be called the Nintendo Ultra 64, but officially changed to the Nintendo 64, which it was being called in Japan. The name and logo were changed to avoid confusion and give the system a single identity around the world. The article also talks about the upcoming release of the 64DD, a disc-based attachment for the system with an expanded memory pack. Unfortunately, this was another development that was left in Japan. The final spread in this issue takes a look at a Super Nintendo classic, Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island. This section is a most wanted list of all the main villains from the game. Each inclusion gives some history on the enemy, as well as gameplay strategy on how to defeat them. The artwork in this column is particularly well done, showcasing colorful drawings of some favorite Mario characters. This issue offers a lot of nice content, highlighting some classic titles, as well as previewing some games and peripherals that never made it to North America. That's all for this episode of Nintendo Power Recharged. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to catch up on some of the previous episodes of Nintendo Power Recharged. If you have any favorite issues of Nintendo Power, let me know in the comments and I'll try to cover them in a future episode. Thanks for the support, and as always, thank you for watching.